Hello, it's Thursday. Why am I so shiny? Right, I think that's better. Hello. <laughs> Hello, it's Thursday. So yes, I have just returned from a wonderful, peaceful week off. Thank you so much for asking. And I hope you all had a fantastic week as well. Uh, I think we all know why we're here this week. But before we get into that, I just want to let you know that voting for the very first episode of Not My Idea is live at the moment. It has been for a couple of days now. So if you go to uh, my channel and then click on the communities tab, you should be able to find the poll there if YouTube hasn't served it up to you at this point and you'll be able to vote for what you want to see next. So as I'm filming this, Loch Ness Monster is in the lead. I'm only going to leave the voting open for about 12 hours after this video goes live. So if you want to have a say in that first episode, you've got to get over there and vote right now. So go do that and then come back and watch this video. Uh, <laughs> anyway, let's get into it. All right, so let's get into tools and materials. You are going to need eight ply, 100% acrylic yarn in a couple of colors. So you're going to need a main body color and you will need about 55 grams of that because I actually measured for once. You are going to need an accent color. So that is used for claws, the belly and inside the wings. And you are going to need 30 odd grams of that, 28 to 30 grams of that. You are going to need some black for inside the mouth. Blah. And you are going to need a small amount of pink to make a tongue as well. In addition to that, you will need your 3.5 millimeter hook, a pair of scissors, a pair of 21 millimeter safety eyes. Now those are the same size eyes as we've used on the hatching dragon and the baby dragon. So same eyes there. And you'll also need pins and needles and some stuffing, but that's it. Okay. So the piece that we're going to start with is the face mask. Now you may be familiar with this technique from when we made the hatchling and when we made chonk. So we'll be making this piece that sits over the top of everything first. So in order to do that, you're going to need to grab your body color and we're going to start with a magic ring and we're going to work up a couple of rows. All right. So that should bring us to 12 stitches around, which is the end of our snoot. So from here on out, we will be working short rows again. So backwards and forwards along just one section of this ring, uh, building out an almost conical shape. So the first row won't look too unusual for that. So we're going to do through a single crochet and then an increase. And we're going to repeat that four times. So you note that we've got four stitches here that we haven't used at all. And at this point, I'm going to chain one and turn, and we're going to work back along the stitches we just put in. Just like that. And then we're going to chain one and turn. So we're now going to just work two rows. So working backwards and forwards, chaining one and turning at the end of each row to build up a little bit. And then we're going to stop and build in our eye sockets. All right. So now we're going to start building in the eye sockets. And in order to do that, we're going to be leaving chain gaps. Now, if you've done either of the other two dragons, you're already familiar with this process, but I'm still just going to run through it again, just to make, get everybody up to speed. So I'm going to start with two single crochet, so one and two. I'm then going to chain 10, just like that. I'm going to skip the next three stitches and then put six single crochet across. So there is our first eye loop. And now we're going to create another one on the other side by chaining 10 again, skipping three, and then by putting a single crochet into each of the last two stitches. So that is what our piece currently looks like. Okay. Chain one and turn. Alrighty. So in our first stitch, we're going to start with an increase and then a single crochet. I'm then going to single crochet 10 times over these chains. So you do that just like you would a regular single crochet. It's just instead of working into a stitch, you pull up your loop around the chains and we're going to do that 10 times. I'm then going to work two double crochet into the next stitch. So the double crochet is when you yarn over, insert your hook, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through the first two loops on your hook, yarn over, and then pull through the last two loops on your hook. So that's my first one. And then I'm going to do two in that first one, then four double crochet, one in each of the next four stitches, and then two double crochet into the last stitch. So that should mean that you have done eight double crochet in total. I'm then going to single crochet 10 times over the second chain, then do a single crochet and an increase to finish the row. Okay. I'm then going to chain one and turn. I'm going to work three single crochet to start with. So now we're going to work on our eyebrow ridges. And in order to do that, we're going to be using post stitching. 
So because the back of the piece is already facing me, I'm going to insert my hook from the side facing me out through the side facing me as well. I consider this to be back post because this is the back of the piece, but it could also potentially be considered front post and I hope that's not too confusing. So we're going to work 10 of those around the eyebrow ridge, just like that. I'm then going to work three half double crochets. So the way we work those is yarn over your hook, insert your hook into the stitch and pull up a loop, yarn over and pull through all three loops on your hook. So that's my first half double and I'm going to work two more of those across. So the thing is about this mask is we want to have a bit more of the undercolor peeking through on top just to give it a little bit more texture. So that is what we're going to be building in in this row. So we're going to chain two and then skip the next two stitches and then work three more half double crochet in the last remaining double crochets from the previous round. Just like that and that leaves us that, that just little peak of color that's going to pop through. And then we're going to do 10 more back post crochet to build up the second eyebrow ridge and finish off with three more single crochet. All right, and chain one and turn. So that is what we currently look like. And in the next row, we'll be building two little bubbles into the top. So we're going to start with a decrease three, just to bring in the edges of this face piece a little bit more, just like that. We're then going to back post across those stitches again. So because the back is now facing away from us, I'll be inserting my hook around the post from the back and then back to the back. And we'll be working 10 of those along that eyebrow ridge. I'm then going to do two half double crochet, chain three, and then half double crochet into the chain gap from the previous row. Chain three again and two more half double crochet. Then 10 back post stitches on the second eyebrow ridge and a decrease three to finish the row. All right, and then chain one and turn. And I, I believe that that was the most complicated row in the entire dragon and you've knocked it out the park. So you don't need to worry about it getting too much harder than that. So that's our eyebrow ridges completed. And that is the first three little forehead gaps. Now the next row has three more. And we're gonna start with 10 single crochet across. Just like that. I'm then going to put one half double crochet in. I'm gonna chain three. Then I'm going to put a double crochet into that first chain gap. I'm going to chain three again. I'm gonna double crochet into the second chain gap. I'm gonna chain three for the last time. And I'm gonna skip two stitches. So I'm gonna skip this first one, which looks like it's part of the gap, but it's not, it's that first stitch. And I'm gonna skip that stitch there. And I'm going to half double crochet into the, that third stitch. Just like that. So those are our final three openings on the forehead. And then I'm going to put 10 single crochet in to finish off that row. And then I'm going to chain one and turn. So for the next row, I'm going to put 11 single crochet up to the first chain gap. I'm then going to put three single crochet into each of those chain gaps. So just working over the chain like we did for the eyes skipping the double crochet in between. And now I'm gonna put 11 single crochet down to finish the row. And chain one and turn. We're gonna start with a decrease and then I'm going to work 27 single crochet across. And end with another decrease. So that is most of our face, including these lovely little scaly patch on top of his head. So we've got one more row to work along the back of the head and then we're going to do his little uh, tentacly bits, <laughs> his little fronds. Okay, so we're gonna chain one and turn and we're gonna work a row of 29 single crochet across the back. There we go, just like that. Okay, so I'm gonna pop him to one side for a second. I'm not finishing off because we just need to make two little bobbles for his central antenna. So grab your accent color. For me, it's this sort of dusty rose. And uh, I gotta tell you, this ball of yarn is about 12 years old. And I believe it was Needles brand when I got it, but I couldn't tell you if they still make this color. So we're just gonna do a magic ring with six single crochet in it and then finish off. And we're gonna make another one just like it. Just pop them to one side for a moment. So now we're going to pick back up our face mask and chain one and turn. So I'm going to slip stitch into that first stitch just like that. 
and then we're going to make our first frond. So I'm going to do that by chaining six. And then I'm going to turn the piece and work down this chain. So you skip the first one. And I'm going to put five single crochet down that chain. Like so. I'm going to slip stitch into the next two stitches on the face mask. There is our first frond complete. And we're going to repeat that twice more up the side of the face. So there we go. If they're looking a little wiggly, just give them a little yank and that will straighten out the stitches. And there are the three fronds and we've still slip stitched twice at the end of that. So now we're just going to work our way up to do his main head bobble bit. We're going to slip stitch twice, which means that there are four slip stitches in total between the last frond and where we're currently going to be working our next few stitches. And we're going to chain six again, just like that. We're going to grab our first bobble. And working in the stitches around, so there, there are six stitches around the bobble, we are just now going to single crochet into each of them. And you'll note that I am crocheting over the ends of these yarn tails just to help tuck them away. So now we're just going to work down the chain. Six half double crochets down that chain, back towards the mask. So that's our sixth one there. And then I'm going to skip one of the stitches on the mask and then slip stitch into the next two just to really secure it down to the head. And finish off. And now I'm going to repeat that process starting from the other side of the face. Just like that. So now your face mask is complete. We are going to pop it to one side and we're going to work on the body. Okay, so the construction on this fellow actually has a lot in common with the previous generations. So we'll be making sort of a piece that goes under the head and then a face mask that goes over the top. The only difference is in this one here, the piece that goes under the head, actually we start at the tip of the nose and it actually extends all the way down to the tip of the tail. This is all one piece. Okay, so we start in our belly colour. So for this particular piece, you'll see that we're using increase threes. Now all that is, is my shorthand for saying put three single crochet into the next stitch. So in this row, you'll also note that we're using a decrease three. So all that means is that we're going to decrease over three stitches. So I'm going to pull up a loop in each of the next three, just like that. Yarn over and complete it like you would any other decrease. And that's a decrease three. So we have one more row in our belly colour and it's going to be a short row. So we're just going to work those 10 single crochet. Just like that. So in this last stitch, I'm just going to unpick it and I'm going to change to my body colour. So I do this a lot in a few of my videos, but basically you pull up a loop of your old colour. You hold that yarn off to one side. Grab your new colour and you hold that parallel. So. There we go. It's focusing nicely for me for once. Pull through that new colour, finish off the stitch, and just like that you've got your new colour on your hook ready to go. So because that's a short row, I'm going to chain one and turn. So the, the next group of rows are going to be worked backwards and forwards, chaining one and turning at the end of each row, and that is going to be building up the curved neck section of his body. So I'm just working that final decrease three now, just like that. And what we're going to be doing next, I'll just tuck that loose end in there, is we're going to work around the edge of this opening to start crocheting down in this direction here to form the neck. So that's kind of the beauty of short rows like this is that they help you turn your work and then you can continue on. So what I'm going to be doing is putting eight single crochet down the ends of those rows until we reach where the pink is again. like that. So now we are going to be working in the pink stitches and we're going to be working front post into the pink stitches to help us just really pull our neck into the correct alignment. So what that means is I'll be inserting my hook around the post of the stitch from the front back to the front just like that and I'll be working my stitch over those and we'll be doing 10 of those across the front. So that's nine and this is ten. So then to complete the round, we'll be working eight single crochet up the other side with the final one of those stitches, 
landing in that decrease three from the previous round. So it'll be seven along this edge and then one in that top stitch, just like that. Okay, so now you're going to want to count and make sure that you are 26 stitches around. Uh, and if you are not, chuck an increase in now. Uh, I know that sounds really sort of rough and chaotic, but it's more important for you to have the right number of stitches than for there not to be a strange increase in the back of your head. And that is the easiest place for us to disguise it. So now we are going to continue working in the round and build up that neck portion. So we're going to build up the neck until the next round of short rows, which will be sort of to curve that chest piece. But we're going to stop at that point and insert the eyes. But for now, we're going to just extend that neck. Okay, so just to finish this section off, I'm going to do nine single crochet just to move where our row start point is. Just like so. I'm going to chuck a uh, stitch saver in. And now we are just going to pull in our mask piece and position those eyes. So I've gone ahead and I've stuffed just the head section. Now, keep in mind that when stuffing this piece, while you do want it fairly firm, you don't want this headpiece to bulge too much. So I'm making sure that this, particularly this underside of the jaw, is sitting fairly flat and not, not bulging outwards, just because we want to leave room for the lower half of the jaw. I'm then going to grab my mask piece and I'm just going to line up the tip of the noses, just like that. Then line up the back of the jaw on both sides and just secure the back of the head as well. So you can see there that that's why we bothered to put those gaps in because you get those sort of nice color variation. So now we know exactly where we want the eyes to sit. So I'm going to grab my eyes and I want the back edge of the eye to sit pretty snugly against that eyebrow ridge. So I'm pretty happy with that location. So I'm going to take all the pins out and I'm going to unclip the face mask. Now <laughs> we will be pinning it back on several times throughout this process just to help us position various pieces. But then it's just easier to actually finish attaching those pieces with it not on. So you will wear the face of your brother for now. Ha ha. All right, and then I'm going to unstuff. So just to also help you get a bit of an idea, mine are attached between rows seven and eight, and they have about 10, 10 to 12 stitches be visible between them as well. That'll hopefully help give you a, a bit of an idea, but attaching your face mask is, on, is genuinely the best way to tell exactly where your eyes should be positioned. And now I'm just going to clip those on. There we go. I am going to restuff it just because it doesn't hurt. And I've already got the exact right amount of stuffing here. So now we are going to continue working. We're going to continue building up the body. So as mentioned that the, the head, the neck, the body and the tail are all one continuous piece. And so now we are just going to finish working on that piece, stuffing as we go. And now we've finished curving off the chest. We're going to once again work around the edge. We are going to be working 12 single crochet down this edge to the corner. We'll then be working 11 front post single crochet along this edge here, just like we did under the neck to just help curve the body the right way. And then we'll be working 11 single crochet up this edge. And then in that decrease that we just did then, we'll be doing an increase inside that stitch. <laughs> All right, so that is our completed body section with eyes attached. We're going to pop that to one side now with the face mask. And we're going to start working on some of the limbs. So first up, we're going to do the front legs. Now the front legs are made in several pieces. So, excuse me, but you wear that for a little while, okay? 
Okay, so the front legs are made as one big sausage with the claws as separate pieces. And we're leaving some little holes in the work again, just to allow some of that texture through. And we actually make a small patch of our, our belly color and we sew that in on the inside to get that color to just peek through a little bit. And you'll notice that that motif is used in a couple of different places around the dragon. So that is what we're gonna work on now. So we're going to start by making the little patch that goes inside. And we do that just by working up a little disc. So there's the patch that's gonna go inside the front leg. Pop that to one side. And now we're gonna grab our body color and make the main trunk of that leg. So that's the end of row 13. So you'll note that we've left these little gaps in there and that they kind of look a little bit flat and closed, but if you bulge them out, they open up a lot more. So what we're going to do is before we finish off the rest of this leg, we're gonna take the little patch that we made and insert it. We're just gonna make sure that they are stretched nice and open, pin that in place. Then I'm gonna take a little bit of our body color yarn and I'm gonna sew that into place. So just making sure I stitch through both levels sewing around the outside of that patch. And once I'm happy that I've sewn around the whole edge, I'm just gonna clean that up a little bit and tuck those ends inside. And that's how we get those little markings. So now we are just gonna grab our hook again and finish stitching the rest of the leg. There we go. So I've wove my tail around and pulled it tight to close it. And you'll note that I'm just like giving a little pat to flatten that, that little row of decreases out. And that's actually our foot. So there we have our leg and our foot. And now what we need is three little toes to go around. We're going to make this out of our belly color. Now these can be a little bit fiddly to make and uh, I almost feel like I should apologize for the fact that you have to make six of them. <laughs> But uh, practice makes perfect. Okay, so this is, by the end of both of these dragons, I'll have made 12 of these and I will hate every single one of them. Now, as a side note, if you wanted to give your dragon some little teeth as well, honestly, use this exact same toenail pattern and just make them in white and tuck them in the top lip and just see how you feel about it. Because I made a couple of those. I decided not to include them, but that is how you would make them. Okay, so you'll need three claws for each leg and the markings are gonna go on the side. So the claws need to be arranged on the front like this. There you go. So you'll see that that leaves the, the last two rows of the foot free to act as a foot. We have the markings on the side and the claws facing the front. So now I'm going to take a needle threaded with a little bit of my belly color and I'm going to stitch on those three toes. There we go, give each one a little tug test to make sure that it's not gonna fall off. And then you're going to repeat all of those pieces again <laughs> to make your other leg. Make sure that you make a right leg and a left leg. So those are our front feet. So once again, we're gonna pop those to one side and now we're going to make the back legs. So the back legs are similar to a little chonk here. So we make the back legs in two pieces. We make a haunch and we make a little flipper. So the first thing we're going to make is actually the little patch that goes inside the back legs because they have similar spots to the front. So grab your belly color and we're just gonna make a little strip. So we will use that strip in a moment to make the little markings on the haunch. So we're gonna pop that to one side grab our body color again, and we're going to work up a chunky little haunch to start with. Okay, so now we've completed the, so now we've completed the, so now we've completed the haunch. Uh, 
and I'm just going to sew this patch in behind those openings just like we did with the front leg. And that's what it looks like from the inside. Okay, so you're also going to need two of those, just like that, popping them to one side. And now we are going to make the feet. So the feet, we start in our body color to work up a little sort of ice cream cone kind of shape. And then we stitch in three little toenails. So starting with our body color. Okay, so we're gonna finish off with the body color, leaving us with this ice cream cone shape. And we wanna keep it pretty flat, just like that. So the place where we finished off should be falling on one side, just to help you flatten it out in the right direction. And so now we're going to work our toenails onto the foot itself. So grab your belly color and attach it to your hook with a little, little slip knot. And what we're going to do is join in the next stitch after our finish off. So we finished off there. I'm going to join in this stitch here. Now you can slip stitch, chain one, and then single crochet, or you can just do a standing single crochet like I've just done. And I'm going to put a single crochet into the next two stitches as well. So there, I've done three stitches in total. Now I'm going to, now I'm going to skip the next 14 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, still turning the work as though I'd worked around. And I'm going to put my next stitch in that, in there. Like so, and then single crochet into the next two as well. So you should have worked six single crochet in total. So now we're going to work the rest of this one toenail, just working in the stitches we've already worked into. So in a, that's our new round, the pink. Just like that, and then I'm going to finish off. And I'm gonna tuck all of my ends in now. So these two at the base, the yellow and that, that starting pink can just go tucked straight into the middle of the foot. Like so. And for this point at the end of the toenail, what I'm going to do is thread my hook up through the nail, getting as close to the tip as I can. Like so, hook it and then pinching the tip so that we don't flatten it out. I'm just going to Pull that down inside, maintaining that point. So there is our first toenail. Once again, joining your yarn to the, your hook with a slip knot. We are going to join our yarn in the next stitch around on the foot. So this one here. And I'm going to single crochet into the next three as well. So we're working four in total. We're going to skip the next seven. And there should be three stitches remaining. And we're going to single crochet into all three of those. And now those seven stitches are making up the round for our next toenail. So we're just going to work within those stitches up to another point. So now that we've finished our second toenail, we're just gonna stop and stuff it just a little bit before we complete our third toenail. So now for the final toenail, we're just going to join in the next stitch along the foot. And we're going to work a single crochet into the seven stitches remaining in yellow. And that is our final loop around where we're working up the final toenail. And you'll need two of those as well. Okay, so now that we've made a lot of the limbs, we're actually going to just whip up the belly piece, which is just worked as a long flat panel. And every third or fourth row, it's marked in the pattern, is going to be worked as front post, which is working around the post of the stitch, which we've had to do quite a bit of in this pattern, so you should be fairly familiar with by now. So grab your belly color, and we're going to start working that up now. And there is our finished belly piece. <laughs> it's got a good amount of stretch to it too. Okay, so we are going to also pop that aside, but we are down to our last couple of pieces now. So all we have left is the bottom jaw and the wings. So let's start with the wings. <laughs> so for the wings, we're going to start in our belly color and we're going to work up a strangely jagged triangular piece using a series of double crochet. 
So we start by chaining 16, and then in the third chain from your hook, you put your first double crochet in. Just like that. And now we're going to double crochet along the rest of the row for 14 in total. If yours is curling as well, just give it a little tug, it'll straighten out your stitches. So that is your first row. So now we are going to chain two and turn and work 11 double crochet back. So there we go. So you'll note that we are leaving the last three stitches unworked. Now I'm going to chain one and turn and I'm going to slip stitch four times in the first four stitches. Just like that. So we've built up this sort of little diagonal step. Then I'm going to chain two to get up to the height of a double crochet. And we're going to put seven double crochet across the rest of the stitches. So we're going to chain two and turn. And work five double crochet back. Chain one and turn and put three slip stitches in. And then chain two and two double crochet. And then we're going to finish off. So that is the pink part of the wing done. So we are just going to grab our body color again. And starting on the end we finished, we're going to work eight single crochet from the point where we finished up to our starting point. So along this edge here, just like that. Now in that top corner, we're going to put an increase. So just two single crochet. And we're going to turn and then work down the top of the wing, uh, that which is actually our base chain, which should fit 13 single crochet and then a slip stitch to finish. So that's 13 and then at the end we're going to slip stitch and finish off. So I cut off a decent sized tail on that end just so that I can weave it back through and hide it. So now we're actually going to add two sort of veins or, or sort of ribs to the wing and they're going to go from your second point up to the top and then down to the fourth point counting from the tip but like basically these two points up to the top and I will bring in the one that I've already done so you can see that's what we're going to do on this one here as well note that I'm doing it as the mirror of the other one in order to do that we're going to do top stitching now this is something that it's going to be almost impossible for me to tell you exactly which stitches to do it in it's more about sort of feeling your way with it so I'm joining with a slip stitch to that first pointy corner and I'm just going to work my way up in as straight a line as possible up to that top apex of the wing. You can also do this with a needle and thread as well and just stitch it on as detailing if you prefer. That might be easier depending on how familiar you are with top stitching. See I'm just loosely guiding my way up there in between the stitches keeping it as straight as possible. Now, once I get to the top, I'll do one more in there. Once I get to the top, I'm going to work through both loops of one of the stitches up there just to really complete the line. Then I'm not going to finish off. I'm just literally going to turn and I'm going to work in a straight line as much as possible down to the, the, the next point. It doesn't matter if this isn't perfect. It's just to give the wings a little bit more structure. There we go, and when I reach there, I'm going to just finish that off. Stretching those stitches back out. And then just weave in and trim off any loose ends. There we go. So there are our wings. So that's the, the, the back of them and the front of them. And you can see by top stitching, we have sort of left a little bit of a mark on the back as well, which is good. It's actually what we want. So pop those to one side. <laughs> So now we will just very quickly whip up the different pieces we need to make the mouth. Okay, so to make the mouth, you're going to need a couple of pieces. The first being, this is the top of the mouth. It's just a, a little back and forth piece. And then you're going to need the bottom jaw as well, which involves making two triangular pieces. The pattern is on the screen at the moment. So one completely in black and you finish it off and one in your belly color, which you'll see I have not finished off. And what we're going to do is we're going to join these two pieces together. So line up the finish point on your black and your current location with your pink. And then what I'm going to do is stitching through both layers. I'm going to do four single crochet down the, this first side. But the exact stitch count doesn't really matter. 
and then in the corner I'm going to do an increase three which is three single crochet into the same spot we're then going to work six single crochet across the base of the mouth again all of this is through both layers and then in that corner we're going to do an increase three again so one two three we're not stuffing this piece at all by the way uh, and now we're just going to do four single crochet up to the top again along this last side so now in the very very tip we're going to do a final increase three and finish off just tuck any ends in between the two layers there we go so that is our lower jaw so the long side goes against the head and then this is the chin part so the last piece the very very last piece last piece i promise is completely optional and it is a tongue so i've got a slightly different pink here for it uh, you can make your tongue any color you like and so to make that tongue what we're going to do is just chain seven like so then turning and working in the second chain from your hook we're going to put four single crochet then we're going to do a half double and then a double just to give it a slightly thicker base and then finish off alrighty so those are all of our pieces and now we are going to assemble our dragon okay so first things first we're going to attach some nostrils to our eye mask we're going to just need a little bit of our body color to do that all right so we're going to count to round four so one two three and four okay so we're going to slip stitch to the edge and then we're going to slip stitch up twice more just to get us in line with sort of that eye opening and then around the stem of the next stitch we're going to put five single crochet in so it might get a little crowded but just keep packing them in around that same stem so that should give us a little half moon shape just like that then we're going to slip stitch across four times and then around the stem of the next stitch we're going to put five single crochet again and then slip stitch three times to the edge of the piece and finish off so there are our nostrils so grab your head and body and we are going to pin our face mask back in place and use it to help us position the lower jaw so we line up the tip of the nose and the tip of the nose again and then the jaw on each side and then the back of the head making sure those eye sockets are positioned how we like alrighty so next up grab the top of your mouth and we want it centered in this under jaw piece and we want it roughly four rows down so that's four rows down from the tip of the nose so just bend that up a little bit and go one two three and four we're going to line the narrow end up with that row pin in place then if you're going to add the tongue like i am what you do is you pin it in the center a little tilting off to one side just like that and then we're going to grab our lower jaw now like i mentioned the widest side of that is the side that attaches to the head and what we're going to do is count three rows up of our belly color so one two and three and that's the row where the lower jaw gets attached now you may you are going to want to sort of turn that up the right way and fiddle with things a little bit and just make sure that you're happy with the posing particularly with the tongue you might want to move that lower jaw down a little bit for example which i might do on this one here just because this particular yarn worked up a little bit bigger than the one that i did previously i am pretty happy with that so then we're going to move down so the next bit we're going to look at is the belly so the belly has a flat end and a pointy end now the pointy end lines up with the tip of the tail and the flat end goes under the chin right up against where we changed colors you can stretch it slightly if you need to but basically the tip of the belly piece should line up pretty closely with the tip of your tail so on the roof of the mouth then the tongue then the jaw the mask should not be sewn on at this point and you would stop and you would sew that on as well so starting under the chin sew along this line all the way down to the end of the tail and then all the way back up the other side so i'm going to stop and sew all of these pieces on except for the mask 
Okay, sorry about that. Uh, my, my phone is running very low on battery, so I just needed to take a little break and charge it up so that I could show you how to attach the next few sections. So this is the goofy looking worm that you should have at the moment with the very strange underbite, but uh, he has a certain charm. Uh, don't worry, he transforms completely once we attach the face piece. So just as another note, uh, I've also gone and stitched on the inside of each of the nostrils, just using that, that same belly con contrasting color. So we have done that as well. So now you take your funny lumpy worm and what we're actually going to do is attach the legs next. So we have a pair of front legs, we have a pair of back feet, and we have a pair of haunches. So all of those pieces will attach. Now, as mentioned before, these textury bits point outwards. And if you look at the anatomy of the body piece, you'll notice that we have this second set of short rows, and that is where these front legs will attach. I'm going to pin that loosely in place now. And same place on the other side. So that's where those go. Then we'll be doing the haunches, which go right up against the shoulder. And those three patches, I would face them a little bit towards the back, just like that. And when we sew these on, we're actually going to sew around about three quarters, leaving a little gap, and we're going to stuff them so that they bulge out nicely. It's a similar trick to what we did on the hatchling dragon. So that's where the haunch will go. And same thing on the other side, making sure once again to point our little patches the same basic direction and pin in place. So after that, we will be sewing each of the feet on so that they sit flat on the ground. Okay, we have attached the legs. <laughs> and yes, before you ask, the reason I'm leaving the face mask to last is because I find this face hilarious. So we're going to um, attach the wings next. So the long part is the outer part and the short part is the bit that goes against the shoulder. And I am going to sew the tip down to where the sort of the back curve meets the neck curve. We're gonna sew up two or three centimeters on each wing just to help them stay perky and in place. So from there to there and there to there. Note that I've put the main veins facing outwards, but from the front you will still be able to see some of the top stitching, the, the underside of it. So we're going to stitch those on now. And then we've just tucked all of those loose ends in. And now finally we will attach the face mask because as adorable as that little face is, it can't stay like that forever and really the face mask is what brings this whole piece together. So now for the last time we are going to pin the tip of the nose with the tip of the nose, stretch back the jaw on each side and then along the back of the head, finesse each of the eye sockets so that they are nestling around those safety eyes nicely, just that little peak of colour and then sew around the whole piece including down each of the eye ridges to attach it. So that's it for this week's video. I hope you enjoyed watching it. A written version of this pattern has been sent to my patrons and will be available in my store. I will leave links to both in the description down below. So now at this point, I'm not sure I have any plans to do another dragon, but if this video gets to say 500 likes, I will think about it. So if that's something that you want, you can vote by clicking that like button and turning it blue. So we've got the very first Not My Idea episode happening next week. And then after that, I'm probably gonna move into dinosaurs. All right, other than that, like if you liked it, comment if you've got something to say, subscribe, and I will see you next week. Okay, bye.